So no mass inflows, no bank runs of people taking money from traditional bank accounts, injecting into stable coins like USDT or USDC. Volatility comes into this band, we usually see it spike up within about a week or so. So yeah, maybe you can buy into Nvidia stock and all those stocks that have already rallied 150, 200% and chase the trade and convince yourself that we're in the next bull market. But if we look at the VIX, you're stepping in into an environment with incredibly low volatility in the near term, but in the long term expanding volatility, which likely means that you're buying at pricey levels, you're buying at expensive levels. And as we can see here, and we take a look at the cumulative volume delta, this is our first warning sign here, which is that yet again, we not only have weekly cumulative volume delta over the last seven days, but I'll be honest, I'm not gonna be able to doom and gloom here, it's relatively neutral, right? But that does not negate the fact that there is a bit of a disparity going on between what people are claiming, at least the bulls in this case are claiming is going on in the market versus what's really going on right now. Right now, we are not seeing some massive bank run of dollar liquidity into the crypto industry. I know a lot of people are telling you guys this, are screaming it to the roof that you gotta get your money out of the banking system, go all in on Bitcoin. Balaji said that Bitcoin's going to a million bucks. Folks, uh, I'm not saying that there's any, there's no chance that Bitcoin could become this hedging asset or that it could deviate away from other asset markets and become this kind of digital gold. That's something we've been talking about since as far back as 2017 here on the channel. But unlike a lot of people who continue to chase the same narratives and ignore the fundamentals of markets, we actually try to dive through and see whether or not these narratives hold up. Are there people on mass buying? The cumulative volume delta across the multi-book tool, which is analyzing some of the biz biggest exchanges by spot liquidity like Binance and Huobi, is telling us right now that it's not happening. And you see this across Coinbase and so many other exchanges when you analyze that kilo volume delta. That's problem number one. So we're not seeing some mass forced buying that's just clearing through and driving prices higher. Once more, on, over the past couple of weeks, not only have we had cumulative volume delta, but we have been seeing a pretty consistent pattern here on the overall price alongside the heat map. Now, the heat map is a visual representation of the changes in the order book for Bitcoin's price. Now, the order book is significant because these are those bid and ask orders or limit orders that we discussed about earlier. These are what allow for significant degrees of support and resistance on price. And while the order book can change and sometimes people can spoof essentially setting certain orders at certain prices and then removing them, most of the time with the heat map, especially when analyzing tools like Bookmap's multi-book tool, you're able to spot when there is forms of distribution. And this is very important for us to watch for when it comes to relief rallies or even just broader uptrends in price to understand when we're potentially hitting resistance beyond just analyzing price. And this is where we can see it playing out in full swing, where it is playing out in broad daylight. First off, you have a market wave of optimism as people, or more specifically, retail traders, could be institutions as well, those who believe the price is going up, they start market buying here in the short term. Now, first off, this is a sign here of optimism. At the end of the day, it is something that is driving up price. However, watch what happens when this market optimism comes in. It comes in to fill the order on the order book. So someone here just was able to sell a ton of Bitcoin into buying pressure. Now notice what happens after that. Notice how there isn't enough to follow through, but rather we see continued downward pressure and a lot of that optimism faded within the next wave of price. On top of that, we have another wave up here in price that comes up to the order book. The order book is now even heavier than it was before hundreds more Bitcoin than were there previously. And that's why, again, the heat map looks a bit thicker, looks a bit hotter here. Essentially, there are more Bitcoin now at the exact same price range. The price has no ability to get above and clear through that market pressure. Essentially, someone not only took advantage of that buy side pressure, but secondary, they took the opportunity to continue unloading into price. Right? As you can see, the market order flow continued afterwards. It is continuing here as we go here to the right. 
Simply put, distribution doesn't always look exactly the same, and you have to learn how to spot these kind of patterns. But essentially, we can see here that price action is being taken advantage of. This optimism on the other side of the trade is satisfying another trader who's trying to close out and get out of their positions. And if this continues to happen enough, if that resistance keeps happening there and price is not able to get above it, price is going to move lower, generally speaking, or it's going to stay there. It's not gonna be rallying higher. This is a prime example of why I really dislike the kind of false narrative that's being shared around. Even though price action did expand over the past couple months, we did have positive cumulative volume delta for the past couple weeks. And we're gonna be the first to say here that yeah, we didn't trade the rally to the upside, fair point. But it doesn't negate the fact here that over the past two to three weeks, we have seen neutral or negative cumulative volume delta. And this was the exact same pattern we saw during the bear market, albeit just more aggressively. It's always gonna be very soft at the beginning and pick up further and further pace to the downside when it becomes clear that price can no longer expand, that there are more net sellers than there are more net buyers when it comes to that cumulative volume delta as well as order book pressure. Now, I wanna go ahead and focus in on something that I think the vast majority of crypto content creators, traders and investors do not watch. I think it is a chart that probably 98 to 99% of people out there in the crypto space have not seen. And it is going to be the determining factor that's going to allow you to help figure out when Bitcoin is approaching bottoms and when it's approaching relative tops. Today, we're gonna to be talking about stablecoin liquidity. Now, we've talked a lot on this channel already. You've probably seen me talk about this before, and I'll go ahead and turn off the drawings here so you guys can see it. You've probably heard me talk about USDC and USDT uh, in the total market cap, right? Now, market capitalization for stablecoin liquidity is an important measure here because it's letting us know whether or not the overall increase in liquidity is enough to sustain a broader uptrend and vice versa. If we're seeing a contraction of liquidity, this can be a sign that we're not ready for a bull market, that there isn't some mass inflow of capital which is needed to drive bull markets. We can see that quite clearly here. Since the previous bear market bottom in December 2018, some of you might have been watching the channel as far back as then as well when we were trading during that period of time. And many of you will remember that during that period of time, we had an increase of stablecoin liquidity all the way into March of 2022, taking stablecoin liquidity from just a mere $2.5 billion all the way up to $134 billion. Not bad if you can get it. That's the kind of liquidity we need to really drive a bull market. And I'm not saying we need to have that kind of expansion, the same percentage of expansion or let alone we need that to happen next week, right? This took time to play out here. However, there is a very unique way we can start to measure this over time. And first off, we just have to start with the basics here. Let's go to this question here, whether or not we're seeing any stablecoin liquidity expansion, right? I know some people think that, oh, you know, but when you're buying Bitcoin, you don't need stable coins. Like you only need that for altcoins. But even back then, guys, when altcoins were not faring well, and when Bitcoin was really leading the way like it is now, right, during the previous capitulative period in this market, we saw a 100% expansion in stablecoin liquidity during that relief rally. Once more, if we take a look right now, we're not seeing any increase in stablecoin liquidity. In fact, it has been contracting since back in March and is relatively flat with where it's been since back in October. So no mass inflows, no bank runs of people taking money from traditional bank accounts, injecting into stable coins like USDT or USDC in order to go out as an on-ramp to buy Bitcoin. We're not seeing this. 